Good morning. Hopefully I'm going to be able to keep this one short. Um, I wanted to talk quickly about a story I read yesterday. Um, this isn't necessarily a book review. I think it's more just an interesting, interesting story, interesting thought experiment. Hopefully I'll be able to keep this one short because there's not... Well, there's a lot to say, but it's more about um, just sort of getting the story some exposure. Um, so the story is called The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelis by Ursula K. Le Guin. This book was recommended by Cosmic Skeptic, not to me personally, just in a video that he did recently, um, in the context of veganism, which is why I was so interested in reading it. And the story is worth reading, don't get me wrong, Le Guin is a fantastic writer. If you've never read anything by her, I, I cannot recommend her enough. Um, I don't even really like science fiction, but I definitely see her as one of the best um, that I've read. I don't have a wide you know, variety of knowledge in the genre, but this is a short story. It's like five pages long, really short. I highly recommend reading it. But the crux of the story is that you have this utopian society, right? Where no one suffers, you know, everyone has the best possible life. She explicitly says in the story, like, you can fill in the gaps yourself, right? This is the best society that you specifically can think of, okay? But the caveat is that, you know, somewhere in the town, in the city, right? There is a child locked away in a room in basically what's a mop closet, right? And he's, um, nobody's allowed to be kind to him, right? He's sitting in his own excrement. Um, he's slowly losing the ability to speak because he has no human inter interaction, right? And just for the purposes of the story, essentially, that one being's uh, suffering is the predicate on which the, the you know, unimaginable pleasure of the society is built upon, right? It doesn't, it doesn't have to make literal sense. It's just, it's a thought experiment. And so the question or what the story kind of asks the reader is, would you stay in that society, right? Um, you know, she also goes to say that everyone in the society knows that this child is there, right? They all understand that this is the foundation for the society's happiness. This one being essentially a, a Christ figure, right? Who is, who is taking on all of the suffering of the society um, on its shoulders. And I'm, I'm, I read it to be, um, it's not that this being has elected to be in this position. It's just sort of the reality that, that they're in, right? He's not voluntarily uh, putting himself in this position so everyone else can thrive, which I think is an important philosophical distinction to make because you're doing this against his will, essentially, right? And so, you know, Le Guin says that uh, people will visit occasionally if they're, um, if they're curious about the child's well-being or situations or whatever, um, but they're not allowed to be nice. They're not allowed to speak to the child. They can't comfort the child. They can only go in and look, right? And so she says, some people go and they just turn around and walk and they, they leave the town forever. And some people go and they, you know, there's a change comes over them and they're, they're kind of more withdrawn for a year or two. And then one day they're just gone. They've left the city because they can't reconcile themselves to, you know, the, the foundation upon which their happiness is built. And I mean, I think not only is it a beautiful story, like it's really well written, of course, but it's also just such an interesting thought experiment. And the same, uh, you know, the same tension, the, pretty much the same story, honestly, is uh, raised by Ivan Karamazov. Um, my Russian is, I mean, I don't have any Russian, so forgive my pronunciation, but in uh, The Brothers Karamazov, you know, he raises a question when he's talking to his, his younger brother, who is a, um, also, if you haven't read The Brothers K, oh, it is literally a perfect novel. It is a, a masterwork, one of the greatest things ever written. Cannot recommend it enough. Um, but it raises this question, right, of, you know, if the entire, the entirety of creation, of, of all of God's creation was predicated on one little girl, right, who's being suff who's suffering, who's being beaten, who's being neglected, um, would you say yes to such a world? And his brother, who is a priest, you know, he's in the, the Russian Orthodox Church. His brother says, no, I don't think I could say yes to such a world because that's, it's 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 beyond not fair, you know. It flies in the face of all of our moral intuitions that anyone should have to suffer just so other people can be happy, right? Well, I think the story raises a lot of interesting questions for, uh, you know, not only for veganism but for antinatalism because we live in that world, right? the The happiness of the many is predicated on the suffering of, I, I won't even say the few because everyone suffers and some suffer to just unimaginable degrees, while others have you know, decent lives, what we would still consider lives not worth starting, but decent lives. But, you know, in order for that to be the case, we have to have suffering, right? It's not even a question of like, should one individual 
um, sort of prop up this this structure of pleasure for everyone else. You know, everyone suffers, and it's it's distributed unequally, but everyone suffers and eventually dies, right? And I I mean, my ideas are, are half formed here. Obviously, I'm still vegan. I'm an antinatalist. Like it's it aligns with my um, my intuitions, and I think you know. Ethically, at least, I want to say I would I would leave this society. I couldn't live with this, right? Um, I'm someone who who watched footage of uh, slaughterhouses once, one time, and went vegetarian the next day and was vegan within the next couple months um, because it was so impactful for me, right? Like, I can't look at that and then just go back to living my life the way I was, right? It's just my, my brain wouldn't allow it, um, for better or worse. I know a lot of people can justify uh, eating meat even after seeing stuff like that, but it's just sort of, I, I think it's just a really, really interesting thought experiment. I wanted to give this story a little more exposure, you know, to the few people who will actually watch this video. Um, I encourage you to read it. I encourage you to let me know what you think because I would love to talk more about it. Um, and again, you know, this isn't a review. I just, I think this story raises a very, very interesting question. Um, and one that's been haunting people for a long time, you know. Um, Dostoyevsky lived in, I think the 1880s, you know, I think he wrote The Brothers K in the 1880s or so. So, you know, at least 150 years people have been thinking about this. Uh, the question is essentially, can we all justify what we perceive to be the goods in our lives uh, if they're predicated on the suffering of, of someone else? And this is, it's an important issue, you know? To me, it cuts to the core of ethics. This is what ethics is about. Should we, should we be paying attention to this? Should we be minimizing the suffering of others? And of course, to me, the answer is yes. And to most people, the answer is yes. But um, I think this story just sort of raises the question of how far will we go and what will we allow in order to um, allow ourselves to live, you know, pleasurable lives. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say on this one. Hopefully I can't actually see the time on my phone right now. Hopefully it's not too long, but um, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Hope your day is filled with a minimal amount of suffering.